the semi-finals of the 2024 Inter-Secondary School Debate Series brought to you with kind compliments of Caribbean Union Bank. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Caribbean Union Bank, you matter to us. Caribbean Union Bank, our people, our purpose. Every day at Caribbean Union Bank, we are committed to creating the kinds of products and services that you want and need. We are not just a bank. We are your partner on your journey to financial freedom and success because we are driven by you. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Welcome to the second and final round in the semifinals of the Caribbean Union Bank Intersecondary School debate series. I am your moderator, Priscilla Marsh Sutton. If you missed our last encounter between the Antigua Grammar School and the Antigua Girls High School, let me inform you that the Antigua Grammar School edged out the Antigua Girls High School to the finals. Congratulations to them once again. We have a brand new encounter this evening. The St. Anthony's Secondary and Sonovel Richards Academy are meeting to debate the moot. Government's control of regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. Government's control of regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. Let's meet our teams. With us, we'll start with the proposition, St. Anthony's Secondary. Good evening, I'm Lauren Curry, and I'm the first speaker for St. Anthony's Secondary School. Good evening, my name is Faith Moses, and I'm the second speaker for the St. Anthony's Secondary School. Good evening, my name is Cameron Jackman, and I'm the first reserve for the St. Anthony's Secondary School. Good evening, my name is Yamaya Emmanuel Yearwood and I am the second reserve for the St. Anthony's Secondary School. A big round of applause for Team St. Anthony's Secondary. Now it's time to meet our opposing team, Sir Novell Richards Academy. Good evening, I am Derisa Desri and I will be the first speaker for the Sir Novell Richards Academy. Good evening, my name is Janelle Charles and I am the second speaker for the Sir Novell Richards Academy. Good evening, my name is Jay Joseph and I'm the first standby speaker for the Cernova Riches Academy. Good evening, I am your second standby speaker for the Cernova Riches Academy, Aid Matthew Ward. There you have it, Team Cernova Riches Academy, give them a round of applause. As is customary, a panel of judges will decide on the team that will move forward in the competition with us this evening. Tarika Ferris, Compliance Officer at the Government of Antigua and Barbuda. Gavin Emanuel, Director of the National Archives. And Elissa Graham, Public Relations Officer, Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission. A round of applause for our judges. <laughs> our alternate judge is Mr. Kieran Murdoch. And our timekeeper, as usual, is the lovely Miss Aisha Lynch. Give Aisha a round of applause. She works very hard every week, keeping me in line with the time and ringing those bells. We will begin with the propositions. First, the speaker, Lauren Curry, followed by Sir Novell Richards Academy, Teresia Desiree. We will then move on to the second speakers from each team. First speakers will be given five minutes for their presentations. And the second speaker, three minutes for his or her presentation. The bell will ring once at one minute and twice before the allotted time would have expired. Following the presentations, we will move on to the rebuttals. In that segment, three minutes will be given to each presenter. Now you know the rules and you have met the teams. We're going to take a break to hear from our sponsor, Caribbean Union Bank. When we return, the competition, the debate begins. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Caribbean Union Bank, you matter to us. Caribbean Union Bank, our people, our purpose. Every day at Caribbean Union Bank, 
We are committed to creating the kinds of products and services that you want and need. We are not just a bank. We are your partner on your journey to financial freedom and success. Because we are driven by you. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Welcome back to the Caribbean Union Bank Intersecondary School Debate Series. If you're just joining us, the moot for this encounter between the St. Anthony's Secondary School and the Sonovel Richards Academy is government's control of regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. We will now begin this encounter with the first speaker from the proposition, St. Anthony's Secondary. Please welcome Lauren Curry. Madam Moderator, esteemed judges, distinguished opponents, listening and viewing audience, good evening. We are here to propose a moot. Government's control over regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. Now, before giving reinforcements to our stance, we must first define the key terms of our moot. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, control is defined as to limit or rule over actions or behaviors. Regional air travel involves a, invo involves, a sorry, inv involves a movement of people within a region via the use of airlines, connecting smaller territories to larger ones. Primary is defined as more important than anything else or a main concern. Demise can be defined as the end of something that was previously thought to be powerful, such as a business, industry, or system. Based on these definitions, we now interpret the mood to be government's control of air travel throughout the Caribbean is the main reason for its failure. According to documentation published by the World Bank, Caribbean countries are less likely to connect amongst themselves than with the rest of the world. A trend has been observed that shows regional air travel has decreased by 5% annually throughout the last five years. In our argument, firstly, I will address the overall cost of regional air travel, taxes collected by the governments, lack of cooperation amongst regional governments, and the negative implications this has had on integration across the region. My colleague will then put forth reasons to explain how bad management of resources led to the lack of generated profits, the failures of former regional air carriers, and wasted investments. Were the opponents, in order to approach this argument, we felt it pertinent to book a trip. We selected Barbados for this experiment because it is the current location of the nearest U.S. Embassy. Antiguans and Barbudans therefore regularly make trips to their shores for business or for pleasure. We booked round-trip flights on three different regional air carriers, Inter-Caribbean Airways, Wind Air, and Caribbean Airlines. To make it fair, all trips were booked for one adult, traveling from March 22nd to 30th. From our research, we determined that Inter-Caribbean Airways was the most affordable airline with a ticket price of a little over 1,000 EC, while Caribbean Airlines was the most expensive with a ticket price slightly over 1,700 EC. To go to Miami on a major airline just cost 300 EC more. Regional, air, regional airlines should provide passenger air service to communities that lack sufficient demand for major airline services. So why is regional air travel so expensive? Instead of going to Barbados, I could add a little extra money and go somewhere internationally. You best believe I'm booking that trip to Miami. Honorable judges, government's control has had an impact on air travel through, air through airports and routes. There are even some specific regulations or policies that hinder the growth of regional air travel. The total airfare, which is a ticket cost from the airlines plus added taxes by the government, is often affected. We mentioned booking trips on various airlines, and as such, we must discuss the taxes collected. Using information from the above-mentioned airlines, Antigua and Barbuda appear to have one of the highest landing and airport taxes in the region. Our government collects roughly 320 EC on each ticket sold. This high additional tax can often, cause, can often cause the affordability of ticket prices to skyrocket. What are these taxes used for, if not for the hindrance of regional air travel? On the point of regional cooperation, we must remember that the main shareholding governments in Liat 1974, Antigua and Barbados were in disagreement over the relocation of its headquarters. This lack of cooperation has led to the airline still being grounded to this day. If the governments have put their egos aside and cooperated, we would still have our crown jewel of inter-Caribbean travel. 
According to the International Monetary Fund, regional integration is the promotion of economic integration and cooperation among its member states. However, this sort of integration is being hindered. According to Roland Holder of Cricket West Indies, moving the cricket team throughout the region has become increasingly difficult. Formerly, the team and their excess bags can make, to, make it to their final destination all in one day due to multiple Liat flights. With the current carriers only having one flight per day and usually smaller planes in Liat's fleet, excess bags have to be sent the next day, affecting their practicing. Chartering flights to move sporting teams across the region is having a negative impact on major events. As a part of our rights as citizens of Karakum, we should be able to move freely across the region. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. My bags are packed and I'm ready to go. Round of applause for our team, St. Anthony's Secondary School. She completed her presentation in a time of 4 minutes and 38 seconds. We now move on to the first speaker from the opposition, so Novell Richards Academy. Please welcome Dericia Desiree. Madam moderator, distinguished judges, my worthy opponents, listening and viewing audiences, a pleasant good evening. I, Derisa Deji, your attendant, stand before you to oppose the moot which states that government's control of regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. For the safety of this debate, permit me to set the parameters before we take flight into this discussion. As stated by the Collins Dictionary, control is the power to make all the important decisions about the way something is run. Regional air travel refers to the movement, the transport of people or goods by air within a particular region. Primary means main. Demise refers to the end, failure, or death of something. Madame Moderator, the move requires that we examine whether our Caribbean governments are the main reason for the death of air travel within our region. We, the opposition, strongly disagree. Madam Moderator, Honorable Judges, I ask you to secure your seatbelts as I take you on a flight into the past. During this journey, you will encounter the turbulent forces that have sought to crash regional air travel within our region, which include, one, the COVID-19 pandemic, two, the global economic crisis, three, climate change, and four, lack of investment. My fellow attendant will take you on a smoother journey, highlighting the importance of government's control in sustaining regional air travel. First and foremost, Madame Moderator, the decline of airlines in the Caribbean does not signal the demise of regional air travel. Instead, unpredictable forces such as the COVID-19 pandemic play a part in its decline. In 2020, Liat 1974 Limited suffered losses amounting to 109 million US dollars. Sir Ronald Sanders, in the December 2022 edition of the Daily Observer, raised concerns that the financial baggage brought on by the pandemic prompted regional governments to make the tough decision of closing down Liat without a feasible alternative. My esteemed opponents, given this information, can you blame our governments for the downfall of our beloved Liat? When CNN correspondent Julia Buckley disclosed that 64 major airlines succumbed to the pandemic. Furthermore, both Virgin Atlantic and 10 major US airlines awaited a $500 million bailout from their respective governments. Secondly, Madame Moderator, Selvaji highlighted in a 2023 Elsevier journal that the aviation industry is filled with numerous potential hazards and uncertainties. As a result, global events like the Gulf War in the 1990s, the 9-11 attacks, and the 2008 financial crisis led to the closure of over 100 airlines between 2008 and 2010, due to a decline in travel demands, as stated by the Kappa Center for Aviation. Madame Moderator, the decline of Air Jamaica in 2010 and its subsequent demise in 2015 were primarily attributed to these factors. And even though the current economic and energy crisis has increased the operational cost of flying, regional air travel still perseveres. Thirdly, Madame Moderator, similar to how a shark needs to swim to survive, Airlines need to fly to stay afloat. However, the frequency and intensity of hurricanes due to climate change, as noted by UNICEF, pose a significant threat to small island developing states, resulting in prolonged aviation grounding and losses for both governments and airlines. Thus, 
Hima Danger in a 2017 Flight Global article agrees that Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria disembarked the islands, leaving a $13.6 million loss, a 30% revenue drop, and a recovery cost of $155 million EC dollars for Antigua. Unfortunately, the anticipated recovery time was expected to be 12 months, coinciding with the onset of the 2019 pandemic. Finally, Madame Moderator, the Caribbean archipelago has several unprofitable routes. As per Arnold Jerome's 2022 Medium article and the Caribbean Development Bank, our thin markets and low passenger volumes are too small to offset the high fixed operation costs. Uh, to offset the high fixed operational costs of these routes, leaving investors hesitant to invest in the region, consequently causing a decrease in intra-regional travel. Madam Moderator, Honorable Judges, the decline in regional air travel is a complex issue, influenced by various factors such as the pandemic, the global, the global economy and the environment, all of which are beyond the government's control. However, despite this decline, regional air travel is not dead. Hence, I implore my worthy opponents not to lay over blame on the government, but rather marshal and with the baggage of your argument. Through this process, you will realize that the turbulence and the risky nature of commercial aviation have contributed to the decline of regional air travel, but not its demise. Thank you. Thank you. That was Dericia Desiree, the Novell Richards Academy, and we are we're really on a journey today. We're we're taking flights, and and I'm all here for it. She completed her presentation in a time of four minutes and fifty three seconds. Now it is time to hear from our second speakers. We are going back over to the proposition. The proposing team, St. Anthony's Secondary. Please welcome Faith Moses. All protocols observed, good evening. Continuing the proposition argument, were the opponents, as we all know, the Caribbean airline Lee at 1974 Limited went out of business in 2020. Did you know it was the third time in their history filing for bankruptcy? The cause of Liat's failures can be linked to politics and poor management. As mentioned by Les Roy Brown in the Daily Observer, having money to acquire an aircraft is not the end of all required financing. We still need to consider the costs associated with any and all necessary certifications and licenses. With the high cost involved in seeing Liat fly again and his previous failures, many governments across the region have taken a step back. Judges, remember, Liet is not the only failed regional air carrier. Founded in May 2011, with all the hopes of all other low-cost airlines, Redjet wanted to strive continuously to lower fares, even further so that everyone can fly. After a year of flying and three months of pleading with regional governments to receive subsidies to restart, the airline closed its doors for good. If this is not an indication of how government control has hindered regional air travel, then I do not know what is. As stated by Les Roy Brown, over the last 30 years, there have been over 40 airlines that flew the Caribbean skies that are no more. And we just only gave two examples. Madam Moderator, in recent years, the Antigua and Barbadian government invested almost one million EC dollars on a commercial aircraft. The Barbuda Airways was to be the nation's pride and joy, according to Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown. How can this be the pride and joy of our nation if the airline does not exist? First announced in 2021, this airline was supposed to offer flights between Antigua and Barbuda and to the wider Eastern Caribbean. However, this aircraft was eventually handed over to the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force and has no commercial function. This money could be the better invested into Liat, or better yet, buy an APOA new tent. In an interview with Delano de Souza, a lecturer of economics at UE Cave Hill Campus, Government control comes in the form of safety and regulatory elements, which is supposed to make travel easier. However, because of the cost in operating airports, the government has passed these indirect costs onto the consumer, which increases the rates and prices, then decreases accessibility. As mentioned previously, traveling nowadays can equate to at least 1,500 EC dollars just for airfare alone. They're too wicked. Judges, Madam Moderator, we are many people, but we are still one Caribbean. We have come to the 
undeniable conclusion that government's control of regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. That was Faith Moses, Team St. Anthony's secondary, and she completed her presentation in a time of 2 minutes and 48 seconds. We now move on to the opposing team, Sonovel Richards Academy. Please welcome their second speaker, Janelle Charles. All protocols previously established, good evening. My colleague mentioned the turbulent factors that have resulted in the decline of regional air travel. To reinforce our standpoint, I will lead you through a seamless exploration of the importance of government's role in addressing, one, the competitiveness of regional air travel, two, external crises, and three, revitalizing regional air travel. First and foremost, Madam Moderator, in dealing with the highly competitive commercial industry, international airlines have rebranded and merged, as seen with American Airlines, merging with seven now defunct airlines to create a strong brand, highlighted in the US Air Mergers and Acquisitions Report of 2024. Similarly, with numerous airlines competing for our government our profitable routes, our governments have restructured our airlines to protect routes and maintain connectivity. Hardiman, in a simple flying article, reported that Trinidad rebranded BWIA as Caribbean Airlines in 2006. Subsequently, Jamaica fully integrated Air Jamaica's fleet into Caribbean Airlines in 2015 in order to maintain regional air travel. Secondly, Madam Moderator, the financial support from our governments has sustained intra-regional travel. The Caribbean Development Bank's 2015 report revealed that a 65 million EC dollar loan was granted to Liat shareholder government for fleet modernization and service enhancement, allowing Liat to surpass any privately owned airline in the Caribbean for 67 years. Likewise, the St. Vincent Times on June 21st, 2021, reported that after losing 109 million US dollars due to the pandemic, Caribbean Airlines managed to stay afloat through a government guaranteed loan of 100 million US dollars from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Madam Moderator, this clearly demonstrates the dedication and commitment of our governments to regional travel. Finally, Madam Moderator, government involved in the aviation industry instills confidence in the continuity of regional travel. Thus, Prime Minister Gaston Brown, principal shareholder government of LIAT, disclosed in the February 12th edition of the Antigua Newsroom, disclosed plans to revitalize LIAT with support from Dominica, Barbados, and St. Vincent, with a capital from a Nigerian investor. Thus, by May 2024, Liat will experience a nirvana and, like a phoenix, transform into Liat 2020, emerging from the ashes to once again navigate the Caribbean skies and unite the Caribbean community. Madam Moderator, Honorable Judges, despite the decline in regional air travel, my colleague and I do not acknowledge its demise as it lacks factual basis. Therefore, the argument against our government's role in the demise of regional air travel is unfounded and contradicts all governmental efforts to uphold and sustain regional air movement. I thank you. Thank you, Team Sonovel Richards Academy. That was their spe second speaker, Chanel Charles. A round of applause. She completed her presentation in a time of three minutes and 17 seconds. We will take our second break to hear from our sponsor, Caribbean Union Bank. When we return, the rebuttal segment. We'll be right back. Driven by you. Every day, driven by you, together a brighter way. Caribbean Union Bank, you matter to us. Caribbean Union Bank, our people, our purpose. Every day at Caribbean 
Caribbean Union Bank, we are committed to creating the kinds of products and services that you want and need. We are not just a bank. We are your partner on your journey to financial freedom and success. Because we are driven by you. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Welcome back to the Caribbean Union Bank Intersecondary School Debate Series. If you are just joining us, the St. Anthony's Secondary School and the Sonovel Richards Academy are meeting to debate the moot. Government's control for regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. The rebuttal segment is about to begin. We will begin with the opposing team, Sonovel Richards Academy. Each presenter will be given three minutes to complete his or her presentation. The bell will ring once at the beginning of the final minute and twice when the maximum allotted time would have expired. It is time for the rebuttals. Please welcome from the opposing team, Sonovel Richards Academy, Janelle Charles. Madam Moderator, Honorable Judges, my esteemed opponents, listening and viewing audience, once again, a pleasant good evening. My opponents aim to accuse the government for the demise of regional air travel. Madam Moderator, my opponents' argument is flawed, for they have not yet proven that regional air travel has ceased. Firstly, Honorable Judges, my opponents have not grasped the main point of this discussion. Therefore, I would like to clarify the meaning of the word demise for you. According to the Collins Dictionary, the word demise means the end, death, or termination of something. Last time I checked, Caribbean Airlines, Inter-Caribbean, and Wind Air are still in the air. Are they ghosts or UFOs? I think not. The, these airlines are tangible proof that regional air travel still exists. Secondly, my opponent stated that the lack of collaboration has led to the supposed demise of regional air travel. However, no amount of collaboration can withstand climate change. No amount of collaboration could have combated COVID, COVID or God forbid, another pandemic. The collapse of 64 major airlines worldwide due to the pandemic speaks volume to this. Thirdly, honorable judges, my opponents may have led you to believe that the high taxation has led to the supposed demise of regional air travel. However, our low passenger volume, unprofitable routes, corrosive saltwater atmosphere, humidity, expensive aviation technology, and exasperating fuel costs, according to the Caribbean Development Bank, have all contributed to high operational costs. How can all of these costs be mitigated? My opponents, suggestions please. Finally, my opponents have criticized our governments, claiming that they have bad management of resources. But tell me, which government is perfect? And if our government's management is so bad, why have our Caribbean-based, government-owned airlines, such as BWE, Caribbean Airlines, Air Jamaica, and Bahamas Air, have been recognized by the World Travel Awards for the last 30 years as the Caribbean leading airlines, outperforming all other major airlines? Madam Moderator, our governments recognize that regional air travel is bigger than profits and party politics. They understood that airlines like Liat and Caribbean Airlines are the Caribbean's heart and lifeblood, with veins stretching far north and far south, linking us to our people and culture. Sorry linking us to our people and culture and elevating the standards of the Caribbean people and community. Although our airlines bled, our government served as its emergency care, providing injections and treatment. Even though Liat fell victim to the COVID-19 virus, it will be revived. My opponents, if a doctor has done all they can to save a life, 
Will you still blame the doctor for the patient's death? Neither can we solely blame our government for this. Instead, let us celebrate the fact that our government's determination and commitment to regional connectivity and integration will ensure the viability of regional air travel. I thank you. Thank you. That was a Team Sonovel Richards Academy, Janelle Charles. Please give her a round of applause. She completed her rebuttal presentation in a time of 3 minutes and 42 seconds. To end the rebuttals, we will hear from the proposition. Please welcome Team St. Anthony's Secondary, Faith Moses. All protocols observed, good evening. We will be rebutting these five points stated that, uh, that our opponents stated. Firstly, the COVID-19 is one of the contributing factors to the demise. Secondly, Liat re the Liat revitalizing process. Thirdly, American Airline and Virgin Atlantic. Fourthly, climate change. And fifthly, the government's process in reviving old regional airlines. Firstly, COVID-19. COVID-19 has only been going on for five years. This, these problems have been going on for decades. As stated in the proposition second speech, over the last 30 years, there have been over 40 airlines that flew the Caribbean skies that are no more. COVID is not an excuse. Secondly, our opponents mentioned American Airlines and Virgin Atlantic. American Airlines is not responsible for funding regional airlines, and Virgin Atlantic was not a part of regional air travel. Thirdly, our opponents stated that Liat is rising like a phoenix, but where are they now? Nothing has happened. Just because they, are, they bought an aircraft doesn't mean anything, that, and that's not the end of all required financing. Liat already filed for bankruptcy at least three times. What stops them, that from happening again? Climate change. Our opponents stated, that climate, uh, stated climate change. My worthy opponents, what does climate change have to do with the government's control? Climate change is a gradual process that has been happening over the years. This has not affected regional air travel. And fifthly, governments aren't responsible for reviving old airlines. Governments are the reason why these airlines are failing in the first place because of the lack of cooperation with each other. Governments should be able to work together and not act like children. They need to put their egos aside and work together. And I come to the end of this rebuttal. We have come to the strong, undeniable conclusion that government's control of regional air travel is the primary reason for its demise. Thank you. That was a team of St. Anthony's secondary Faith Moses. She completed her presentation in the time of two minutes and three seconds. On that note, we will take another break because that brings us to the end of the final encounter in the semi-final round of the 2024 Caribbean Union Bank Intersecondary School Debate Series. Please show your appreciation once more for both of our teams. I don't know about you, but I think we had a wonderful debate today. I think it took flight. Give them a round of applause. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Caribbean Union Bank, you matter to us. Caribbean Union Bank, our people, our purpose. Every day at Caribbean Union Bank, we are committed to creating the kinds of products and services that you want and need. We are not just a bank. We are your partner on your journey to financial freedom and success. Because we are driven by you. Driven by you, we're better every day. Driven by you, together a brighter way. Thank you for staying with us. The St. Anthony's Secondary School and the Sonovel Richards Academy met 
in this encounter. The judges have deliberated and tallied their scores to bring us the judges report and of course the final scores. Please welcome judge Mr. Gavin Emanuel. Good evening. First of all, uh, I have to say that the judges this evening were very impressed with the quality of the debate. Uh, it, the debate was of such a high standard that it was really um, the kind of debate you expect for a finals. It's a pity that these two teams were not debating in the finals here this evening. Uh, they, they, yes. As I said, you know, the quality was very, very, very high. Uh, the judges generally were impressed with the uh, way the topic was approached. Uh, there was good use of varying sources, uh, wide sources from within the Caribbean. Uh, that was impressive. And um, we found that generally the sources really supported the argument. I think where the main difference uh, was witnessed is the way in which the teams applied the definitions to advance the argument. And this is where uh, probably the, the key difference existed between both teams. The use of references, when using references, it's always important to establish the credentials of your sources. Uh, it's one thing to say, X or Y person, but what is their qualification to speak on this particular topic? What gives them the, the standing to make a statement that can stand up to scrutiny? Uh, and so there are times where we felt that this was not clearly done. Also, make your definitions reinforce and advance your arguments. Uh, anytime you're creating a definition, for a term, be very uh, specific so that it advances your argument. Don't define your terms in such a way that the team, your opposers, can use your own definition against you. Uh, in terms of the handling of the scripts, what we found is that for some speakers, the, the way in which you held the script became a bit of a hindrance to your own natural flow, your ability perhaps to gesticulate or to, to relax at the podium, because all of these things feed into your confidence and your overall um, ability to convince not only the, the judges, but also the audience. So with those for a few comments, we now get on to the business that you're here for. The better speaker for the proposition this evening, the judges found, is Miss Lauren Cooey. <laughs> and the better speaker for the opposition we found this evening was Miss Janelle Charles. Congratulations to both, uh, but the judges found that one speaker stood head and shoulders above the rest this evening, and that speaker is Miss Janelle Charles. And so, with a, now you're going to understand why we say this debate was worthy of a finals. So the Average score for the proposition for the St. Anthony's Secondary School was 79 marks. The average score for the proposition, the St. Novel Richards Secondary or Academy, is 91 points. <laughs> so we found that the winner of tonight's encounter 
was the Sunovel Richards Academy. Congratulations. Uh, would, would just like to say as well to, to the St. Anthony's Secondary School, if you, if you score 79 points and lose a debate, you have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. 79 points against most teams, that would have been a winning total. But this evening, Sir Novell, they just came well prepared. Congratulations to both teams. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. That was Gavin Emmanuel. And of course, he just gave us the judges' report and the final scores. Please, a big congratulations to both of our teams and a heartfelt congratulations to Sir Novell Richards Academy, the winners of this encounter. And they will be moving on to the finals against the Antigua Grammar School. We hope that you enjoyed this encounter. Before we close, we have the closing remarks. Please welcome the proposition, Lauren Curry. Good evening, all. We would firstly like to thank our God for allowing us to arrive safely and giving us the knowledge for writing these speeches, our gracious principal, Mrs. Callius, for letting us participate in this competition, our trainer, Ms. Maynard, for working hard and diligently with us, our teammates for supporting us, our opponents for giving us a competitive debate, Caribbean Union Bank for, for sponsoring this competition, and the Ministry of Education. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. We now move on to the winning team, Sonovel Richards Academy, Dericia Desiree. Good evening once again. Firstly, I would like to thank the Lord Almighty for making all of this possible. For without him, nothing is possible. Also, I would like to thank my teammates and my mentors for their unconditional support and for my mother's love and support. My worthy opponents, thank you for this tough fight. Win or lose, it was an exciting debate. Thank you. And I would like to say a heartfelt thank you to you all, my studio and television audiences, for being so kind and so gracious. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Very generous. I'm sure you're at home and you're also cheering your favorite team. Remember to join us next time for the finals. The Antigua Grammar School will meet the Sonovel Richards Academy. Until then, I am your moderator, Priscilla Marsun. Remember, always stay positive. Bye-bye.